Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about FOP, the Formatting Object Processor. FOP, or the Formatting Objects, are actually a part of the SQL, uh, SSL language. So there's uh, language that you take XML files and then translate them into other XML files. So the formatting objects are actually a part of that, which I never knew. Um, and this FOP is an Apache project which will take that formatting information and create different objects or different outputs. And in my case, I work with a lot with PDFs, of course, and we had a project where we wanted to create a PDF. So we, I was asked, how can you use this uh, thing for that? Maybe that is a good way of creating PDFs. You don't have to write all the code yourself. And way back <laughs> when this channel actually started, I created a PDF generator that generated an invoice using uh, Java code. And it was pretty good. I was pretty satisfied with it. It created a pretty nice invoice. If we look over here, this is this example invoice that I created. This is when you don't have any lines and it calculates subtotals and so on. So I thought that would be a really good starting point to actually learn about FOP, create the specific invoicing template. So I went on to do that and I created the header uh, with a lot of work. And then I was thinking, will this be easier to do with ChatGPT? Because I know that ChatGPT can create something confidently wrong that I can fix in order to create something that is pretty good. So I asked ChatGPT a couple of questions. The questions were, can you create an invoice header in the full format? used by Apache FOP. And it said, no, I cannot, but here is an example. And it gave me it anyway. <laughs> uh, do you have any suggestion how to write an invoice main body? And it gave me that. Thank you. Can you give me a suggestion for an invoice footer? It gave me that too. Uh, how, how would the main document look? Can you add the above, place, uh, uh, above pieces as placeholders so I can stitch them back together later? It gave me the main document. And then I said, can you re give me an example of the data document that will be applied for to this transform? It gave me that. And then I said, it seems like the template for the customer and com company is missing. Can you create that as well? So I got all the pieces, I put them together and I generated a document. And the document that ChatGPT created looks like this. Not really close to my template. I wouldn't say that it looks bad. It's a little bit inconsistent. You have a lot of different fonts and so on, um, font sizes, but it doesn't look that bad. You can take this, of course, and then create something that is actually usable. And the data document, if we look back here and go into this chat XML, you see here that you have it here company and the customer address. You have some invoice number and invoice date, and you have a due date, and then you have a couple of items down here, and the rest is calculations within this document. And the ChatGPT XSL, you see here that I got placeholders here that I put all this information into. So it was pretty much just a cut and paste, paste kind of thing. And you also have here down here that it sums the amounts and create uh, the values at the bottom. So it's pretty good. Um, but I said, okay, let's take my previous example and then uh, just take the JSON files that I had and make them into uh, normal um, XML files. So I had found some converter that converted them over. So this is the format that I used before, but in uh, XML format. And the only hiccup I had was translating between comma separated numbers and dot separated. So if you have comma as a decimal point instead of a dot, it doesn't really work. So I just went through and renamed or replaced all those characters. Doing that in XML or XSL is a little bit cumbersome, so I didn't want to go into that. Um, but other than that, I have all the features here, same as billing, so that I don't have to say that shipping address again and so on. And my 
template after a lot of working out looks something like this for this empty one. Uh, no, this is the previous one. So let's go here is the empty one. Uh, I didn't fill out all the rows down here. I didn't see that that was really necessary. Uh, but other than that, it looks very similar to the old one. Uh, they are a little bit different in how they are uh, placed, but more or less the same kind of uh, invoice. Uh, it is a lot of code to style this in XML, uh, but I think it works pretty well. So if you go back here, I can actually run this again and go from empty to a single. And when I run that and go back to the document, you see here that I have a single, I have different addresses here. So I actually have a function to handle that. And I get one line and it actually calculates both the subtotal and the VAT. And I also have a bunch of notes here that works fine. We could go to the next example I have, a few. Uh, so let's run that. So I have a couple of lines. You see here are three lines. It actually calculates those together, gives me the VAT amount and so on. So that works fine as well. And the last, of course, you have to have lots. That's always the four different things you need to check. Uh, none, <laughs> the empty one, or the one or few or a lot. And if we go to the lot, you see here I have multiple pages of this. And I also, at the end here, had some value that I could say that keep this information together so we don't split it over two pages. And then it will count everything together and so on. So let's go through my little invoicing here. Uh, so first off, at the beginning here, you have to set the paper size. So you have a layout master up here, and you say that this is the main content. It has a page width, and this is just A4, the sizes of an H4 page. And then you have the uh, margin and a top and right margin. So I wanted to have 10. Uh, millimeters in, at the top and 20 millimeters at the margins and you could use points here as well and other measurements everything that you can use in CSS pretty much but here you can have millimeters which is pretty nice because the, the document that we are working with is PDF and that's a print document so you actually want to have the measurements how it would look on the page um, so next up, we have the page sequence here, uh, master reference content. And here I have, and everything here is actually in a style sheet as well with a template slash. So I can actually use it uh, going down here um, for different tasks. And then we have a table at the beginning here. So this is my header table. I have some placement where I can put a logo and then I have the different columns of data and then I have a little bit of space between them. So in the first column I put a logo and then I have the example ink and the invoice in two different cells here. And then I put more things into cell two and four. So here we have the main address for my company. And then we'll have the invoice date and invoice number here that I put in and I just fetch it from the document, invoice header and invoice date. So not much to it, just a bunch of different uh, paddings and so on in order to get the right, uh, right look and feel pretty much. Uh, next up, I have this ship to and build to. I put those into two different tables here. So in column four, two and four, I have the, these two. And then I have this function here where I call the build to template. And if this same as billing is true, I call the build to again. Otherwise I call the ship to. And those I have in the bottom here. So these are just an, a way to print out the billing address here. And I used the select statement here to get an extra space between the different values. So title first, last name, then the address one field, and then I have a zip code and a city, and then I have a state and country here that I put out. And I do the same down here. The only difference is that I say I want to use the ship to address instead. So we jump back up here again. Uh, next up, we have the 
table of shipping information. It's just a bunch of columns here, some background color and border around the different fields, and then a little bit of padding for the numbers to look correct. And the same goes down here, just fetching the different ship numbers and so on with a little bit of padding. Uh, nothing strange there. Uh, next up we have the uh, document where we have the actual body. Uh, so the product number, description, quantity, unit price and the total. And if we don't have any products at all, so if there is no product ID, uh, so no items available, then I skip this. Otherwise, I will go through here and iterate over the invoice rows and the uh, background. I want that to be different, between, uh, intermediate between odd and even lines. So I actually do a position mod 2 equal to 0 and then I get the a little bit darker lines and the, the uh, lighter lines so I could uh, switch between those. And then I use this variable here for the background color with a font size of 8. And then I just go in here and pick the different information. Here I will uh, format the number of quantity. So I have at least one zero at the end. Uh, and when it comes to the unit price or the actual calculated total, I want two um, decimal uh, values or decimal numbers afterwards. So that's a different formatting rule. Then we come down to the summation part here. And I started by creating a new block with a little bit of space before. And I said that this will not be broken up. Avoid breaking this up over pages. Keep it in one page. And then I say I want 220 millimeters for the note values. And then I have 45 millimeters on the other end where I put the actual uh, information with the subtotal and so on. So this is the first note and then I have the column number subtotal uh, number three. Uh, so this is just the headers and then I have this template here and this is the complicated one. <laughs> so I will call it for the first invoice row and if we go down and look at that template down here, matching invoice rows. So first off, I create this running total value, which start as zero. And if there is a following sibling <laughs> after this, then select that following sibling uh, to apply this invoice row and then send the parameter to a running total over to it. And it should be equal to the quantity and unit price of the cur current row. So you will do that for all the rows until you come to the last one. And here we can sum it up. So I will take the running total, add the last line as well as a unit price. And then I created a VAT, which is in Sweden at least 25%. Uh, so that 0 0.2 <laughs> calculated of the total. And the subtotal is just subtracting that value in Sweden. So uh, if you want 25% uh, that, that's how to do that easily. And then I just have the printing function down here. Uh, so the first note value here is over six rows spanned. So you can say that you span over multiple rows exactly as you do with a table in HTML pretty much. And then I have this column here where I look at the product ID. If that is available, then I will print out the actual number in SIC, uh, the subtotal. Otherwise, I just print out that we don't have any, um, any value. And the same goes for the VAT value. Just print it out in SIC or zero. And the same for the total. And then I have a last block here, and that is if the note is larger than the actual subtotal block on the other side, then I want it to be able to grow. So I have an extra table row down here, so that can grow with the note, so the note can be arbitrarily long uh, and don't uh, end up changing the actual size of the block where the uh, total value is. So this was the template that I ran through here. I will uh, give you a link in the description to a GitHub uh, repository with all these files if you want to pick them up and do your own thing with them. Uh, 
in order to run it, you run it with FOP. And FOP is something that you can compile yourself. You just download from the Apache port FOP uh, page. If you compile it yourself, you will in the directory of uh, FOP. So if I open this up here and then we go to uh, the XML graphics FOP here. Um, and then in here you have two uh, multiple directories. And if I run MVM package, it will actually create this. And then in the FOP directory, there is a binary, either the just FOP binary or the FOP.bat, the FOP.cmd. And you can run those with the parameters. Uh, in this case, we can run it with the XML, that's your data file, uh, lots XML. And then XSLT, the uh, invoice XSLT that we have here. And then the PDF file, which is the output, which is invoice.pdf. You can also cre create an XML file with just a bunch of these faux objects that don't really have an XSLT um, translation, just the actual uh, document in a static form. Then you can run it with dash faux instead to a PDF. Or you can create a rich edit file or a Word document or something like that. It can create multiple different documents, but I've used it for PDF at the moment. Uh, this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you liked this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.